Okay. So now, <laughs> is it ready to go? Yes. Okay. All right. I said goodbye <laughs> on the last section. But we got cut. So we have. Um, I want to say here we are on section two, and we're in the middle of this example. So I recognize two dx was in my box. I replaced it with a du. Uh, the x is a u over two. I'll come back to that. And under the radical is my u squared minus my a squared. Now, to be honest, I don't usually go back and do all that because I could see everything had lined up from my box. So I'll give you the choice. Probably in the beginning you will, and then you'll stop. The only thing, this one might be hard to visualize. All right, what can I do with this? Now it's almost like that exactly. So, um, um, Gianni, what can I do with this two? You can multiply the whole thing by two over two. Um, no, it's that two is already there. I stuck it in there. So, okay, I see what you're saying. All right, I've just noticed that the two is in the denominator, so of the denominator. So that is like it being in the numerator. So how do I adjust for it? You multiply the top by two, and then you can get rid of it. Um, does that work? Because it's like you flip it. All right, so, so you're saying this is the same as this. Yeah. So that's what you're saying. All right, all right. We're, we're speaking the same language now. And so if I move <laughs> that out across the integral sign, you see that it actually cancels the one half that's already sitting there. So you all right with that? A two in the denominator of the denominator is the same as a two in the numerator. And it's easier to work with up there. Uh -huh. So I moved it out. So we have now the exact uh, thing. So we can say the answer, we have the exact pattern that we need. So we can say the answer is one over A arc secant, um, absolute value of U over A plus C. And now we go back and put in the numbers. So 1 over 3, arc secant, um, absolute value, our u is 2x, our a is 3, plus c. Let me check that, see if we got everything we needed to. We did. All right, so do you see how that one works? Right, that's, we did have to make an adjustment here. So be aware that sometimes you have to get the x value from inside the box. I got it from that line, re, rewritten, re, re, I had to move some things around. So, all right, that's example one. And it was a straightforward one. So hopefully that makes sense. So we did have to adjust a few tweaks, a few tweaks, but nothing too bad. All right, let's go and do another one where we have to call on some higher power thinking here. Oh, jeez, I'm scared. Another trick that I don't think I've taught you this time is this one, where you rewrite the sum. Of, uh, you take, <laughs> I'll write it like this. Rewrite the sum as, I don't know how to say it. Rewrite the sum of two quotients. Maybe that <laughs> makes sense. I don't, I'm having trouble figuring out how to, to title this little trick. So let's see. After we do it, we'll come back and see if that makes sense. Last night it made sense when I titled it. So <laughs> let's see. All right. All right, and you, as I taught you on the first one, you're supposed to go over here and kind of pick your poison. So which one do you think this one is going to line up with, sort of? Erin, where do you think I'm going to let, end up with this one? Um, maybe the arc sine one? I think arc sine is going to be involved, but what is the, uh, where's the downfall on arc sine? Um, that the top is not the derivative of the sine. Well, on arc sine, that's why I like, oh, to, I like this du to be sitting over here on the side. 
because it really it's just the one sitting there. And do you see, we don't have anything close to a one up oh, there. Oh, is it maybe that there's an X in the numerator? Yeah, it, definitely this is matching this pattern. <laughs> so it's going to be probably going to end up using that at some point. But we got to tweak it. So here's the little trick. I'm going to take that and change it so that it looks like this. And see if out your algebra is happy about this. The power went out. Yeah. All right. If I just had sitting here, here's what's in your thought cloud, which I'm going to erase in a second. So I'm going to need that spot. X plus 2 over this denominator. Is, doesn't that equal x over this denominator plus 2 over this denominator? Because when you have like denominators, we've been trained since Algebra 2, like 8th grade or whatever, you put the common denominator on the bottom and then you add or you, you do whatever the top tells you to do. And this one was add x plus 2. So are you comfortable with that? Do you see that where, how that will help set us up for success? Hopefully. All right. I don't know whose turn it is. Brendan will pick you. All right. On this one, I still cannot use arc sine because arc sine does not have a variable up here. So is there a blast from your past, a trick up your sleeve from the past that will help us with this one? It's not today's lesson. What you, what's your you? U substitution. All right. What's your you? X. No. Nope. No. X squared. No. Nope. No. 4 minus X squared. All right. Very good. <laughs> All right. So generally it's going to be, um, if it's an expression, I notice like you can probably see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the top to be the derivative of the bottom. So I'm going to pick the whole bottom under the okay. bracket to do that. Uh, or something like that. So I tried other U's and they didn't work, so it led me to this one. So, Brendan, what's the derivative? Negative 2x. All right, so we can adjust, put in a minus 2 here, a minus 1 half there, and now we have this expression. 1 half times the integral of U. Johnny, what would be the exponent if I want to bring, if I call that U, and it's in the bottom, and it's under the square root. If I bring it up and call it u, it'd be minus one half. All right, so u to the minus one half du. So now that's something we can integrate. So it's just the old power rule. So what would that be, Gianni? Um, it would be two u to the one half. Oops. Oh, the two would the two would cancel out with the minus one half. So it'd be minus u to the one half u to the one half divided by one half. All right, you're ahead of me, so you're saying that cancels out. So we just have a minus u to the one half. Did you follow our steps? Mm -hmm. We recognize that we can rewrite that when there's a square root of u on the bottom. It can be written with this negative exponent. The negative 2x is the du, so we're set up for the power rule. We add one and divide by that, and we've got u to the one half over one half ending up with negative u to the one half. So u was what? Uh, 4 minus x squared to the one half. You should be comfortable doing this. That's from the past. But um, be aware it's going to show up is what I want to say. All right, now here we are here. So Aaron, it's now time to apply this. So can you, if we pull this 2 out, which we're, we like to do, can you go right to the answer and just pick out the u and the a? All right, yeah. that's what I recommend. So that will be arc sine. Um, let me see what the u is real quick. Um, would it just be x squared? Um, the, remember? Or just x. Yeah, the u squared, we want just u. So you're going to have to take the square root of that term. So um, just x, yeah, as you force off over 2. Over two. Plus All right, so I'll bring that down here where it can match up with the first part of the problem. Right, let me check it. 
Yeah, I, I changed that to the square root, but that's the only difference. All right, what do you think? Is that doable? You had to recognize. You had to recognize that you had to break this up because it didn't follow any of the patterns. And then you had to recognize this was an old E and this was a new E. So you have to recognize that. So, all right. Again, probably when you do it yourself, you might need a nudge the first one or two times, but then you'll be fine. All right, last example. And if I don't cover all the tricks, they list them in your book because I don't want to stand up here all day. But, the, oh, here, what, here's what I named it. Rewrite the sum of two quotients. Rewrite the sum of two quotients. Hmm. I, I don't like that name <laughs> for that trick we just did. But I don't know what to call it. <laughs> All right, completing the square. Do you remember how to complete the square? I, I just remember the term. I some of you. Let's see if uh, Gianni remembers. Yay! <laughs> I'll make this even. So can you, do you know how to complete the square, Gianni? There was something with like adding a B what? or a something. square. I, I don't remember Gianni. very well. Oh, right. oh, do you divide by two and then square? Yeah, very good. So whatever's sitting Ooh. here, the number you need is half of this squared. So in this case, it's a four. So I'm going to add a 4. That makes a perfect square here. But I can't add a 4 on the same side of the equation without adjusting for it. So I subtract a 4. So I really have to change it by 0. So, and this uh, is the perfect square, x plus 2. So that's completing the square. We're going to have to do that right in the middle of our problem. Oh, so that should, be, that should be no, uh, no big deal. So, you divide by two and square. Especially since I just that. reminded you how to do it. All right, the integral. This one will fall into our laps when we complete the square. All right, down here we're going to have to complete the square. How would you know that? How would you know? Well, because notice everything here is two terms. Something squared plus something <coughs> squared. There's all you know, something squared minus something squared. So here there's nothing like that. So we have to at least get two things squared. So that's the signal. I've got to complete the square. All right, Gianni, show off. What would this become? <laughs> um, it would be x squared minus 4x uh, minus, or plus 4. Uh -huh. So then I'll adjust for it. So the 7 has to, we have to subtract a 4 to adjust for it. So Gianni, what's the perfect square? Um, x minus 2 squared. All right. And that became a plus 3. All right, so uh, which form do you think we're aiming at this time um, from, from our list of integrals? Aaron? Um, maybe the arctan one. Pardon? Arctan. Arctan for sure, because there's no square root in it, and this has no square root. And you should be able, if this is our u, du is just dx. So we don't have any adjustments to make. So you should be able to jump right to the answer without the u box. But you may do the u box to clarify it in your mind, especially in the beginning. Can you try to go right to the answer, Brendan? Uh-huh. All right, so you're over here. So, square root of 3 over 3. Square root of 3 over well, 3. Well, because is it, is, it is it A square root of 3? Right. But, and then uh, did you have I to rationalize it? I see what you did. Yeah, I started answering on my Thank paper. You. Thank you. So. You're just too fast for me, Brandon. All right, then. <laughs> He, he, he was doing 1 <laughs> over u. See, a is uh, the square root of this number. So one, oh. 1 over the square root of 3 rationalized. He was well taught. <laughs> I think that was before our, uh, our class, though. No, that's when we started doing it. With, for, with the unit circle, we had to rationalize. Oh, yeah. So is you see where he got that? Square root of 3 is just the same thing. So. Yeah. All right, so Brendan, you've gotten um, up to here. Arc tan of... Yeah, what's u in this case? X minus 2. It is, so it can be an expression, which u means, over... 
over square root of three. All right, I did not rationalize it, so okay. <laughs> let's see if the book Plus did. C. Let me see what the book got. All right, the book led both of these un unrationalized, <laughs> not rationalized. So anyway, it's yours a shame. Is, yours, it is a shame. Okay. All right, I'm gonna drop it there and. Um, there is another little trick that you might need as you go through this set, and I'm just here to help you. I just don't want to keep doing problem after problem after <laughs> problem. So if you find you're at home and I'm not there to answer your question, look in the examples. There are some. Uh, there is one other trick I would have liked to show, but I gotta stop laughing. All right, let's go and look at this assignment. I'm gonna. Um, Probably do this again tomorrow. We'll see. Especially with two of you out. And they're not as easy to recognize when you're trying them on your own. So eventually, I want to do 1 to 23 odd. But, um, I don't know, and 39 and 42. So I'm going to use that. It sounds like a lot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 9. 14, 15, that's our normal amount. Um, let me see how it's going. We've got a good 10 minutes or so, 10, 11 minutes. Let's go ahead and try one to, we'll say one to 19 odd. Let's do one to 19 odd. And it might be a lesson where you find that you want to finish it tomorrow night if it doesn't go well tonight. Whoa, that gets really close. I up. guess I need to tell them the page, huh? <laughs> I'm telling it's you the page. Uh, I didn't write it down. What page is it? Page, page what? 387. 387. All right. So those are, I want a good effort on those tomorrow. I probably will not count them wrong until the next day, but I'll be adding it to it the next day. So be wise to get all these done, at least a stab at all of these. All right? Jonathan, Morgan, over and out.